A lot of people recently have been criticizing women serving on the front lines in the US military. The reason is, two years ago, the ban on women serving in the front lines in the US military was lifted, and since then, batches of women have been successfully making their way through infantry training. Great work, girls. Good on ya. But the first batch of 24 women to attempt the elite officers training in the US Marines, of those 24 women, all of them failed to make it through. And people have been quick to point at that failure and say that all women don't deserve to be in the military and serving on the front lines just because this group of women couldn't make it through their first attempt at officer training. Now, most of the objections that people have come up with are what we in the scientific community would call absolute total bullshit. Let me give you three of the most common objections and why they're rubbish. Objection number one, the female body is not built for combat. Well, some scientific studies do show that women experience high levels of injury from strenuous activities involved in being in combat. But studies also show that women are more likely to report injuries, whereas men are more likely to conceal them. This means that of course there's going to be more injuries reported among women, and when studies take this into account, the difference between the injury rates of men and women is the same. Well, what about the fact that men are stronger than women? Well, it's true that statistically speaking, many men have better upper body strength than women do. Just as statistically speaking, people of African descent have longer legs for their height. Does that mean that white men shouldn't be allowed to jump? The idea is ridiculous. Just because someone is better at something doesn't mean people who can pass the grade shouldn't be allowed to do it. Objection number two, women in combat reduces unit cohesion. This one was made famous by Captain Lauren Serrano, who claimed that men raging with hormones are easily distracted by women and sex, and that the presence of women would be unbecoming. Now, that might sound like it's from a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but Lauren wrote this in 2013. So, what does the evidence say? Well, so far women have been serving in the front line of the militaries of Canada, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Poland, Germany, France, the Netherlands, Afghanistan, Israel, and my home country of Australia. And so far the reported difficulties with distraction and reduced unit cohesion are exactly zero. So everyone seems to be getting along just fine. Objection number three, women need to be kept separate to prevent sexual assault. Well, if you are the type of person that is going to sexually assault a woman, then it is you who is in fact the problem, and not women serving in combat. Segregating men and women is not the answer to reducing sexual assault. A 2009 report by the World Health Organization looked at all the available scientific evidence and found that segregating men and women actually increased the risks of acts of violence by men against women. The solution to sexual assault in the military and in all fields is not to segregate men and women. It's to educate and empower men and women alike and to create a culture of respect and consent. So to those of you who are criticizing women serving on the front lines of the military, your objections are not based on scientific evidence, they're based on prejudice. This should be a question of standards and not a question of gender. If a woman can make it through their basic training, they should be allowed to serve.